What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Scalp Solutions Podcast. I am your host, David Santiago. And today, my guest is Jeff Picasso. What's going on, my brother? What's up? What's up, Dave? Thanks for having me on the show. I've been trying to do the show with you for a while now, but um, you're super busy. You know, you can't even fit <laughs> it, me in. It, it's it's super me. Super busy. You. Speaking of, look, where, where you at super. right now? I'm in Spain right now. You in Spain? What are you in Spain? What, what's going on in Spain? So, um, I, I went. I decided to go to Europe and uh, just check it out because I needed a vacation. So I'm here right now. But at the same time, um, Masuda and Ivan are doing a training in France. Um, a- after our training in France, uh, we're gonna meet up with uh, Tony in Amsterdam. So I'm making a whole uh, ten day trip here, having fun, enjoying, relaxing a little bit. Um, and, and and setting my next my next move, my, what I'm gonna do next. You working on that next move, huh? You you trying to be Mister Worldwide? When you say Tony, you talking about uh, Tony Abagnato from Italy? You guys meeting up where in Amsterdam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna meet him up. I'm gonna meet him up in Amsterdam. All right. So this whole trip, this is all this is all S and P, right? This is all business related. Uh that and real estate. That and real, real estate. estate okay. Involved. All right, we'll 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 tap in um you know with the whole SP aspect and how you got to the level where you're at now, obviously, where you're traveling the world, um, you know, hosting events and, and, and training. Yeah, well, I don't I don't even know, see me and my potential that uh people think I'm at. I still have a long way to go. I haven't even got started. I want to do much more than SP. SP is just a, a stepping stone to get me to a bigger audience um you know so i i see a totally different okay all right and we'll and we'll we'll, we'll come back into that but be, first let's start off with how you originally came across like what got you you know your attention to uh to smp how what, what was that so um so I, mean, I before SMP, I used to be a barber. Uh, so I used to live in Chicago. I'm from Chicago, South Side. And anybody that's from Chicago knows who I am. So um, growing up in Chicago, um, it, it, it's just been, uh, it, it's, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's the best way to explain it. It's um, you can't teach what I learned in Chicago in a book, you know, yeah. so living through through those experiences as a as a youngin uh seeing uh like my my barbers like wake up dead in the car just from uh, smoking some lace drugs um my barbers um uh, having guns in the barber in the barber shops because people come in trying to jack you on christmas so um people pulling guns you know like guns is like candy in chicago you you could get it like a harp like it's nothing so growing up in a rough area and knowing all the people that are bad people to other people but good people to me i felt like violence um and all that crazy shit was normal you know it it was normal right now people are tripping because uh, they seem like the world is over, like people, you know, like it's it's like crazy right now, right? Right. But but um, that is normal to me back in Chicago 10, 20 years ago. Like, so what's happening now is like, like I'm, it's nothing, you know? But like I said, growing up in Chicago, um, I always wanted to get out of Chicago because I didn't want to live and die in Chicago because like my every, everybody I knew did, you know. And um, uh, cutting hair was the first move that I did. Um, I used to do mortgages. I used to do. I, I got the the background in management and how to how to think a little clearly aside from being an artist and do the the business side of it. Cause I used to own a mortgage company and I used to do uh, real estate prior to barbering. Okay. After, right. after high school, no college. Got you. Okay. So you went from, you were doing mortgages, mortgage brokerage, and then you became a barber. And then how'd you come across SMP? Yeah. So when I came across SMP, uh, I, I seen it online and then I, um, 
I, I, I figured, it, uh, okay, let me get it done. But every, all of the SMP was being done in the UK at, the, at, that, at that moment. So when so, you say um, being done, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Being done, you were looking at it from a perspective as a client originally. Correct. Got you. Okay. So you went to the UK? No. So I, I wasn't going to go to the UK because it wasn't that serious. So um, I, um, I got it done in the USA. Um, and then I fell in love with it. And then uh, I... I I bumped into uh, Bryce Cleveland in Arizona and um, Joe Taylor. And that's how it started for me in Arizona. I, I happened to move to Arizona. It, that's another story. And um, here I am now. So that's what, so you originally started. All right. So you got the procedure done and then you met uh, Joe Taylor, Bryce Cleveland. Are they the ones that performed the procedure on you? Or those are the guys that you just came up? Um, on the no, uh, my procedure was done by Mike from uh, Hairline Inc. Okay, got you. Awesome. All right. So he 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 did it, and then um, it, it faded, and then I had it uh, retouched by uh, artist I know. Okay, got you. So then, how soon after you got your procedure done, did you know that this was a career you wanted to pursue? Um. Uh, right away, instantly, instantly, because I already, I already knew half of it, and the other, the half was drawing hairlines. You know, I, I used to be a barber, and I and I had the idea and the concept of what a fade is, and that was the that was the easy part. The hard part was figuring out the needles, the pigment, and technique. Got you. And now, how how long have you been in the SMP industry now? Um, man, between seven and eight years, I, 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 I always say that. So it might be a little bit uh, more. I'm not sure because I remember um, the eight years is when I moved out of Chicago. And that's how I, I remember when my career started. Got you. And how has it been for you so far as an S&P artist? Like, do you see yourself in the industry in the next five years? Oh, of course. Yeah. I, you know what? Um, I, I see uh, myself more than five years because what I'm doing for SMP is something that's uh, setting a footstep uh, for other artists to 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 do, you know, and more. So when you let let's talk about that when you say like some of the 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 uh, the initiatives that you're taking. Uh, you recently had uh, the SMP Expo out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, which. I hosted. Let's talk about that. What what made you wake up one day and go, I want to take on this incredibly like insane responsibility of yeah. putting a show together for SMP artists. It's a it's it's a it's a long story, but um I, the only reason why I did it is cuz um first of all, nobody was doing anything similar to what I was thinking in the USA. So why not? Second of all, you know, I, I, I never done this before. So there was a lot of, um, it was more stressful than, um, than anything. Cause, uh, the, the, why I did it is because, uh, Jay Majors was doing a, a CT expo and then, um, I, I was going to get a booth, but then I realized, you know what, I'm going to need more than one booth. I'm going to need at least three, four, five. And then I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to need fucking more than that. So I just decided like this guy's been doing events and he's, he's real successful. So I'm going to see if I could at least attempt to do something, you know? And, um, you know, I promoted this for two and a half months and I did this on my first one during COVID. So um, it, it was a lot more meaningful to me that um i pulled it off I, when i say i i mean we me collectively you for being the host and everybody that participated in helping um uh bring the show to where it's at and also everybody that came to the show you know if i could give everybody an award that came to that that expo i would you know and, and i'm thankful got you and now putting this show together give me a failure that 
you know what? I don't want to throw it around like that. Just a failure, uh, a lesson that you learned uh, with this expo that you now, you know, you wish you knew in advance before you got yourself, you know, into, uh, into organizing this. Yeah. So what, so initially I was going to, uh, I was the reason why I only promoted it for two and a half months when I had a, a six month window span is cause um, I was going to quit. I was going to say, you know what, Carl, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm so busy running my, uh, my locations in Chicago, Texas, uh, LA, and you know, all this crazy stuff that I'm doing, uh, doing these FYT thing with the needles and, you know, uh, mentoring. Uh, I got my daughter, you know, in another state. So it, 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 it's, um, if I could tell you one thing that, um, when they told me at the Marriott that if you don't do the event, it's going to cost you 80 G's, you know, I'm like, fuck, I got to do it now. So, so that's when I did this, it. So let me get this right. Cause I, I, I overheard the, the uh, story, like, you know, you talking, like we never really got into it and you know, this deep into it. So you want to set up the expo. And then at some point you like, no way, this is too much. I got too much going on. I want to pull out the hotel now yeah. tells you, Hey, it pretty much gave you an ultimatum. Hey, you either go with this or you have to pay $80,000. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, um, we, and they're like this. Um, tomorrow, we're going to send you the bill uh, from our attorney that it's going to be 80 G's um, if, you, if, if you cancel. So I, I had no choice but to do it. You know, I'm not going to pay 80,000 and not even attempt to, you know, to do something. So, um, that that's when I'm like, all right, I got two months left. I got to hurry the fuck up and do this. Got you. And now since then, I mean, you, you, you pulled it off, right? You got us all together. Um, I, from my opinion, I, I think it was, uh, successful little hiccups, but that's expected It's the first time you want a time crunch, but overall it was a great show, but you already announced for your next one. So like my question to you is cause you never had this conversation was, is this going to be an annual thing? Like how often are you looking to, to, to do these shows? Cause obviously when we spoke, you told me like, this is what you now want to do. You want to be the face of, you know, these shows, getting the, uh, getting the artists together, doing some awards, competitions, et cetera. Mm -hmm. No, this is, uh, gonna, this is um, when people assume that I'm doing an annual thing. It was never annual. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to keep coming every six months. Um, annual is a thing of the past for me. You know, I'm trying to do stuff differently. So the way I have mine, that's going to be in April in Cancun. And, and the reason why I picked Cancun is because I already did the USA. I want to keep, keep it going and see if I could do it in a different country and keep going and, and going. I travel all the time and I've been to several countries and um, I think it'll be even more successful in a, in a, in a Tulum, Mexico, Cancun environment. Yeah, no, I think that's going to be amazing. I, I, I think I've seen some, some locations that you guys have been scouting and I think it's going to be amazing. Um, I want to backtrack a little bit because I want to get back to your, your come up um, on mm -hmm. SMP. We'll, we'll be able to talk about like the award shows. I think we could do that for another, another segment too, to, you know, bring some more awareness to it as we get closer to it. But with yes, SMP, in regards to SMP, What's a pet peeve of yours right now that you see in the industry that doesn't really fly with you? Um, I, I, you know what? I really, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't chime in on forums. I don't really uh, talk about what other people are doing. I just, I really don't even, to tell you the truth, I don't pay attention to what other people are doing. Because if I pay attention to what other people are doing, first of all, I'm not going to, I got so much on my plate that, um, you know, every, everybody's trying to make it, you know, so more power to who, who, everyone that's doing their own thing. I, I, I really don't even, to tell you the truth, honestly, I really don't pay attention to what other people are doing. Okay, got you. So there's no pet peeve that you know about. Okay. Because look, 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 because I'm going to be honest with you. If I had a pet peeve and I had something uh, again or not against, but something I didn't agree with, then um, I would probably wouldn't have done it because I would have put I would have focused on it so much and so much and I would have stopped doing it. Like, let me give you an example. When people said that the pink FYT needle is a dud, it's not going to work and 
And look what happened. If I would have just listened to the pet peeve of people talking shit, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Second thing, the online training, people were talking shit, you know, the SP Expo. People, um, it, it, when, when people talk shit, it's, it, it, um, it, it's, it's, I need more of that because that's what fuels me. If you don't say nothing, then I probably won't do nothing. So if you keep talking, I'm going to keep going. So I think that's what uh, makes me who I am. So in a sense, I love people that talk shit. Got you. All right. So you brought up, you know, FYT. Um, how, talk, to, talk to us about your involvement with that, because I don't even know. How do you even come? I, I know one day you just called me up and you were like, I'm going to send you a yeah. new I saw it was from F FYT and it had SMP on the box. Um, I tried them out, gave you feedback, but how do you even come about that? How did yeah. collaboration transpire? Yeah. So before this uh, pink FYT um, story happened, I was always using FYT prior to, to this, to, to me even being uh, on the pro team and stuff like that. Um, I uh, would use them when they were, uh, they had a smoked colored uh, gray one. Right. And I would yeah. always use it. And then um, they came out uh, with the green emeralds, I think. And then I was using the green emeralds, but the green emeralds were not how they are now. They used to look different, but I was always supporting it. And one day um, I was at a expo in Miami and I got uh, I got um, approached by FYT and they told me a proposition. They told me you know, like, what do you think? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, let's do it. Make it happen. And, and it's, this is back on the, when, when this happened, I was in, um, <clears throat> right before COVID, what is it? 2019 December in uh, China, Shanghai. I was there, uh, right before COVID, uh, designing gotcha. and, and working on it. So, when uh, COVID uh, hit, I was already flying back and we we're already in the process of making this needle. So when it dropped during COVID, um, I, was already, I was already working on my next project instead of just being locked up and not doing anything during, during the first couple months of COVID. That's when I launched it and when it hit the, hit the industry. Got you. And when you originally introduced it to the industry, I, I vividly remember... Um, you know, every now and then I'll go into like the forums, you know what I mean? Just to just to touch down, see what was what, what they got cooking. What's the flavor of the month? I remember mm -hmm. you pretty much getting bashed for these needles. And it was kind of like there was no I don't think the uh, people in the industry had any faith in the, uh, you know, in the product. How does that yeah. make you feel fast forward to today? Because, you know, they've now become, you know, like an, an industry, uh, an industry go to and it, one of the industry. I mean, we don't have many, but they are they're there. They're they're up there with, you know, every all the other, um, you know, uh, manufacturers um, and providers. So how does that make you feel knowing that you went from like, man, get out of here. You know, you just put a S and P on a box or whatever. And, and that doesn't really yeah. make it mean industry, industry specific. Um, it's I, after doing it so many times in different aspects of my life, um, I got, I'm already used to this kind of road. So I'm not shocked anymore. I was shocked maybe like 10 years ago when I was doing shit in, in the barber world. But um, um, I knew that the needle was going to do good because I do SMP and I, and, I, and I use a bunch of different needles. And I know to my liking, I knew this needle was going to do good. It just had to reach the masses. Got you. You know, I not saying that I doubt it because I know you. I mean, for people that don't know, listeners that don't know, Jeff um, was my initial trainer. You know, I went from YouTube videos and working on a couple of <laughs> a couple of ads. And then I was like, you know what? Let me get some a real training done. And I did my three day fundamentals training 
um, with Jeff. And this was, we were talking about over four years ago. And I've known you since then to be, you operate at 120 miles per hour, bro. I know you know that about yourself. Um, and I know that that's why you're always moving on to something new and, and always trying to innovate stuff for the industry. And I'm not saying that, that that's necessarily um, a bad thing because we've also spoken offline aside from s &P. Like we are entrepreneurs and that's just when you have an entrepreneur spirit, that's what you do. But I say that to ask, what at what point do you think you go? All right, you know what? I'm done trying to be a yeah. setter for the industry. Yeah, that's a great question. I ask myself that question every day. Every day I ask my question. I'm like, why do I even do this? I don't have to do this anymore. I, I don't have to do SMP. I don't have to be an artist anymore. Um, I, I don't have to stress myself out anymore because the the position I'm in right now. I don't have to work. I'll tell you the truth. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to work because I got the stuff that's coming in uh, residual that I don't have to. Um, I don't have to work. I guess I do this because I like being in the position I'm in where uh, sort of like the underdog and uh, working and, and making something happen. Uh, I, I, that's my purpose. I'd rather have that as a purpose and helping people out than having no purpose and being, let's just say, rich and retired, you know, then I. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like I've done um, what I was meant to do. So I, this position I'm in, I, I, I like it no matter if I'm a hundred million rich or nothing. It's just, the, it's a high, it's like a high I'm catching. When, when you try to do something, me personally, uh, and make it successful and you catch a high, right? Yeah, it, it feels good. It feels good. But when it feels good, it doesn't feel good for so long. It feels good for me about 30 minutes. And then I'm you're like, oh, for the next you're let, looking for the next. Let me, let, let me see how I could beat that high and get that high again. So, you know, so that high money can't buy that high is undescribable. Got you. So now, obviously, you have multiple streams of income, but has S&P been the gateway for you to have those other opportunities smp is it, it was the gateway but also it has to be a complete package where you have the personality and the energy that that that, that, that propels you got you and i'm just bringing that up just to to ask because some people you know some artists that are inspiring to 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 enter the industry you can in fact do well enough in the industry where that can be the gateway to fund you know other other businesses because clearly that's that's what you've done correct got you so now coming back again with smp related you got the fyt you link up with them you're now officially like sponsored by them what are the other tools that uh, you use? What are your go-to tools? Yeah, so right now I use um, the FYT Pink Needle, I use the Ghost Pigment, and I use a, a Cheyenne. Um, I, I, you know, there's a bunch of nice wireless machines out there. I tried them all. I like them, but I, I guess uh, I use the old school Cheyenne Spirit with the, with the wire and stuff. I, yeah. I just is it is you it know, the, that, you use the the like the l-shaped one the l that one? Mm -hmm. the, really? I, use l. I use the l yeah 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 interesting okay and um i i there's a bunch of great machines but that's what i use personally that doesn't mean it's gonna work for anybody else you know everybody has their own uh flavor i and people always ask me uh what would you recommend and i'm like this is what i recommend for me for my my depth you know it might be different upon um what you use everyone else but th and those are those are my go-to's got you and then you said for pigment uh ghost pigment what made you want to go with that like all right you explained why you know the uh the pen that you use the machine that you use um we already know why fyt your involvement what about with the pigment ghost why why yeah. that I'm sure you tried because them of, all. yeah because of the retention it, it, the retention and the way it, when it heals and it fades it's it lasts a lot longer and it's smooth and it blends in naturally to your to your hair tone. That's why. 
Um, I don't have to use it as much as other pigments. And um, I, I like the results, especially on light skinned people. It looks amazing. Got you. What, what would you say is one of your biggest challenges that you're facing right now as your role as a, uh, as an artist, as an innovator in this industry? Yeah. The biggest challenge I have is I wish I could duplicate more of me. I, I need, um, <laughs> I need more, um, I need more of me to help. You, find, me you need five more people going at 120 miles per hour so you can take over the world. You, you know, I just need, um, uh, more, um, you know, I'm hiring, um, I'm hiring artists. If you know anybody or if anybody's listening, I'm listening, I'm hiring SMP artists. And if you're willing to roll out, relocate, make some money, let me know. I'm opening a couple new spots. Got you. So like if they, for anyone who is interested, uh, any of the listeners or the viewers who is going to be watching this on uh, YouTube, let them know where they can send, uh, you know, where you, they can reach you for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're opening a bigger location in, uh, in, in Chicago. So we're going to be in the metropolitan area in Chicago. It's a big facility. Um, that's one location I'm going to need, uh, more artists. And then in, in California, we're opening up another location also in the Orange County location, in the Orange County area. Right now I'm in Los Angeles, LA, Hollywood. So we need something a little further. So if you have any questions or if you have any resumes or anything, send it to my, uh, uh, Instagram at picassojeff.com. You can reach me there. Picasso Jeff, DM me. Got you. And what would be the minimum requirements you would be looking for, for, for a candidate? Yeah. Two, at least two to three years experience, at least. So two to three years experience. Um, and I bring, you know, this is interesting. So two to three years experience, but would you ask them like how many scalps? How many SMP procedures have they performed? Because some some artists are, you know, are not slow. I don't want to say slow. They're they're not uh, getting as much business as they would like. So, yeah, if you look well, at that. Uh, would you take that? What I well, when I look at uh, hiring somebody, I have them I have them do a, a a client in front of me, setting up, do the whole thing, and then from there, I know exactly what you're good at and what you're not good at, and then from there. I work on how to take you to the next level. Got you. So you're going to make them perform a procedure in front of you so you can dictate whether they got it or they uh, don't. A procedure, a hairline, a consultation, uh, how, look, it's much more than just being a great artist. You have to have the whole package. You got to know how to talk to people. You got to dress accordingly and be re real respectful and know your pricing know your formulas know your needle their depth your machine you have to know if it's it's a lot you just don't get hired like that if anybody just hires you like that then um a they don't know what to look for or b um you know what you're doing got you now let me ask you what in your opinion what is one of the most important personality traits or, or strength that someone would need uh, to work in our industry and be successful? The, 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 you have to be relentless. Relentless. Relentless and your personality has to be, you got to be thick skinned and, you know, like don't let uh, people talk shit. Don't let uh, that uh, bring you down and, and uh, show people that you're mad or show people that um, they ruffled your feathers, so to say. Got you. But, so um, you know what, this advice I'm giving you, that's just a, a common sense in life lesson, you know, in any career you're doing, if you're not a thick skinned, and if you don't have a strong um, intuition, you know, of your future, then you're not really going to make it at all. It's all in how much you believe in yourself, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And if you have one piece of advice that you could give someone starting out in the uh, in the SMP industry, what would that be? Uh, perfect, perfect. That's a great question. I would say www.leadersmp.com to get trained. That's what I would say. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, th there's there's I my uh, inbox, my DMs are always filled with um with um with questions about SMP, like hey, what needle do you use? Blah blah blah. Hey. Uh, and I'll answer one question, two questions. But when you're asking me like a hundred questions, I'm like, 
dude, just training. take the, just get a, a, a master program or something, and then you'll learn it hands on even better. So that's the advice I would give because, um, if you see people that are associated with leaders, they're all great artists and they do great S and P work. And it's no, um, it's not a coincidence that they're all successful, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. All right. So there you go, guys, hit them up on leaders. You got some questions. He got, he got the recipe for you guys. So now give me, give the listeners, the viewers one tip or trick that you wish you knew when you first started SMP, that it was like when you figured it out, it was your aha moment. You know what? My aha moment um, was that tip that um, I have a bunch of them, but, but the one, the first aha moment was when I was talking to Joe Taylor a um, long time ago and he was talking to me about needles. And then once he told me about the needles, I'm like, okay, this was a long time ago. And then from there, I started, uh, the started like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, because we used to do one RLs. Um, yeah, but uh, when it was the one RLs and we were talking about it and he was showing me them, he was showing me so much uh, insight on it. And then I'm like, man, this is, this is just one RLs. And then from there, it just made, it came to a three RLs and everything else. But um, I think that was my aha moment. And um, my second aha moment was when I, uh, bought my mom a car and I paid for it. I'm like, okay, I'm going somewhere. I got my mom a car. She always wanted a car. Um, she was always struggling to get me a car growing up. You, you know, all right. So that was, you know, that's when you knew you were onto something. Um, I wanted to go back with the needles because yeah. I remember when you uh, trained me over four years ago, we were, we were showing. What, were we, what, what, what was I using? I, uh, I don't remember. It was a combination. So like at that time, I remember the, it was like the flavor of the, the month, oh, the month was the, uh, the 10. Cause remember at the time they weren't really using like millimeters like they are now. Oh, it's an 18 millimeter, 20 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. And like, Oh, it's a, uh, zero three or 10 Oh three RL. And it was the, um, man, I forgot what's the name of the company that they got like the, the, the butter, like a, a honey, like a bee on them. Uh-huh. So you were using that and a one RL. And I remember because you did, that's what you used. <laughs> Did it fade? <laughs> you use on me. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, um, did my first session. Well, you did my first session and then I couldn't get in contact with you because you were just yeah. busy going all over the world. But yeah, we did a, you did the one RL on me for the first session. And then you went in with the, uh, with the tank, which now we know now is what, like a 20 millimeter. Yeah. So uh, people uh, still use the one RL and with the one RL, man, it's more painful on the client and they bleed more. So that's, you're torturing your client with the one RL to tell you the truth. Yeah. I just, so, couldn't so I was trying, I was really trying to torture you. I was, tr- that was my point. I was trying to really like, well, here's, it, it here's, a, you. here's a news flash. You, you did, <laughs> you did my brother. Before- Who finished it? Who finished it? Oh, uh, Juan. Let me see. Did, uh, did he do a great? He did a great job. So he did. Juan did my second session, and then my third. Se- actually, no, he did the second and a and the third. He did a touch up, and then I had one of my students, um, do my touch up. So what you see mm. now, yeah, I didn't want it all straight and you know, crazy. I wanted to make it look like, create you know, natural. So yeah, I also I also want to congratulate you, my brother. Um. You got so, that salon guy. I was talking to him a long time ago, and I was trying to get him to get the SMP. And then I seen you did it on him, but um, he didn't tell you, right? That he was told. He told me there was several artists that were hitting yeah. him up and were like, "Let me do your SMP. Let me do your SMP." And um, I I How'd wasn't one of those guys. He just he hit me up. He was like, "Yo, I, I love your work. I love your style. You're a funny dude." Um. Yeah. What can you do for me? He had, he had about ninety six questions, bro. And I think that's where. Oh, I, of course. Uh, he, yeah, of course. yeah, by far the the most in depth questions I've ever been asked by yeah. anyone. So yeah. I think just having an answer for him, the you know for each one. Yeah, yeah. I was able to you know get gain his confidence. Yeah. And doing individuals like that prepares you when you're doing celebrities 
and doing high, high, high class um, people because usually talking to their agents and you don't want to mess up their hairline, their agents, because you could ruin their career. Oh, yeah, they'll destroy your career, too, though. Oh, of course, it's like a double whammy. So you go, you'll go down with that with with uh, with uh, with the uh, clientele if you perform, you know, not at a hundred. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, you know, he he loved it. He still to this day he hits me up like, "Yo, bro, you changed my life." Yeah, yeah. Um, did he draw the hairline? Did he tell you how he wanted it, or how, how'd you how'd you uh, did that? Yeah, he wanted it now. He said he wanted a natural. You know, slight little uh, you know, widow's peaks for some age appropriation and um. I did a little my little hairline simulation with the with the fibers, and he was like, "Yo, if you can make it look like this, he was like, I'll be the happiest man. I'll I'll promote it, and and we'll be good to go." Yeah. And we actually teamed up, so we were doing um, you know, we were offering our training together because now he has it done. Nice. He believes, you know, he believes. Oh, wow. The, he believes in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we 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 linked up. Um, to that's offer good, bro. Where, where's he at? He's in Jersey. Okay, so that's close to you. Yeah, yeah, it's probably like about an hour and a half away. Cool, cool, cool. Congratulations yeah. on that. And congratulations on the truck, uh, on the truck business, man. I'm, I'm still trying to get one of those trucks from you. Help me out. Help, help a brother out. Whenever you're ready, brother. Whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready, just hit me up, bro. Absolutely. That's a conversation we can have offline. That's that's different. We have to charge guys to, to listen to that one. But Jeff, my brother. Before we wrap things up, I want you to let everyone know where they can reach you. Websites, Instagram, hashtags, everything. Yeah, if you want to reach me, uh, shoot me a DM. If you have any ideas, uh, collaborations or anything, you can reach me at Picasso Jeff or www.picassojeff.com. Um, training, www.leadersmp.com. And um, we could, uh, we could, you know, Shoot a, shoot me a, a message and we could talk. I'm so easy to get a hold of and I always respond to my texts. Uh, calls sometimes I can't. Uh, if David's Not calling mine. me, I probably won't. I probably won't uh, pick up. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I'm real uh, easy to get access to. Thank you guys and uh, God bless you, uh, Dave. You did a, doing an awesome job with your podcast. I hope you have much success, brother. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. Thank you for hopping on. And before we go, let's give him some dates, man, for the next uh, SMP Expo. Yeah, Nessex, sorry, I didn't even talk about that. Uh, the next uh, SMP Expo 2 is going to be in Tulum in Mexico, um, an all-inclusive resort. It's going to be April 28, 29, 30. So don't miss out. Uh, we're going to announce the host. We're going to have a co-host. We're going to have two hosts. We're going to have David and somebody else. Oh, it, I, it's, it, I'm the host again? Oh, I, I, yeah. I'll take you, bro. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we... Uh, Keep, we'll keep you posted before the end of the month on the new the new lineup we're going to have for the 2022 season. But thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Dave's an awesome dude. And um, thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, my brother. All right, guys and girls, that concludes this episode of the Scalp Solutions Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Also, do not forget to tune in on YouTube if you want to see the actual visual. All right, guys, until the next time. Peace. Hi, I'm Damien. I run Team Micro. We're the world's leading design and marketing agency for the SMP and permanent makeup industries. We set up in 2009 as a one-person operation. We now have a team of 17 people. Within this team, we have the leading marketing experts for our industry, covering all aspects of digital marketing. And we only specialize in permanent makeup and SMP, so we really know the industry inside out. When we take on a new project, we understand exactly what makes your customers tick. So we're able to build products that exactly match your requirements and theirs. We don't want to just build a site, we want to build a website that performs, that converts visitors into inquiries as readily as humanly possible. You're not just getting a website, you're getting a marketing machine that does everything that you need it to do to maximize the number of customers coming through your business. The reason why I joined Team Micro was because of how diverse the client base was. The team skill set is so wide ranging, so it's a great opportunity to learn from them, and it's been an amazing opportunity so far.
What I enjoy when working at Team Micro is you come in and the environment is just like perfect. Everyone's got a smile on their face. It's always positive. You never walk in, no one's in a bad mood or anything like that. For some reason you walk in and it's just, you immediately feel better coming into work. Uh, the opportunities I've found at being at Team Micro have been, been here six months now. Started off in sales, speaking to just American clients. Just started a new project this week that I've been given. It's completely mine and it's um, dealing with a lot of customers. When I say a lot, I mean everyone around the world that's involved with scalp micropigmentation. So it's liaising with everyone within the company, everyone around the world. So it's a great opportunity and I'm grateful that I've been given it within the short time period that I've been here. What I love about working at Team Micro is the freedom of the, the company. It's a really relaxed company. Damien's full of ideas, so it's constantly expanding as well. We're all coming every week and we did a sort of new venture in the pipeline. So, yeah, it's just the, the expansion of the business. It's fresh. I enjoy working at Team Micro because of the team that I work with. I work with a lot of talented people. On top of that, they're also very nice people as well. So it's nice to come into work and feel kind of relaxed and that like you can chat with people as well as kind of get work done and you know, make decent progress on the project. The connection between both of the rooms, like the web design team and the sales team and everybody, because you're all talking all the time and it's really friendly with everyone, you start to obviously develop more skills like the more you talk to people. If I was talking to someone in the web design team, they'll just be like, oh, why don't you incorporate this as an idea? And you start to learn, learn more and more things from different areas of the company. So your skill set is just consistently developing into like what can help the business grow. The reason I chose to join Team Micro was because I liked the way the company ethos looked. When I came for the interview, I liked the sort of vibe that was in the office. I really got along well with Damien, with uh, Dale. And to be fair, just the conversations that I was having with everyone were just really nice. I wasn't nervous, I just was put to ease as soon as I walked through the door. I really kind of enjoyed my time here. I don't think that I'd, I'd kind of asked for anything else. It's like a home, second home. I'm looking forward to what my future holds here. In the next three to five years, I'll probably see the business growing even more. In the space of probably the past six months, it's gone from just four of us to 14 of us now. So yeah, I think it'll continue to grow. Where the limit is that, I have no idea. That's the interesting part, I guess. <laughs>